Hi everyone, welcome to Are You With Me? Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Jen Richmond and I'm one of the co-founders of Our Ladies Sydney and we are super excited to get back to basics with this Are You With Me? Um, program. So what we're going to do in this first recording is start at the very beginning. I'm going to assume that you have never opened our studio and if you have you just as quickly closed it again because it was way too overwhelming. I'm going to walk you through what each of the panels in our studio are, what you can expect to happen in each one so that when we start loading packages and getting data in next time the whole what our studio looks like is not going to be very scary at all, right? So let's start by opening a totally fresh session of R. And what you can see here is that the default setup for our studio is that there are four quadrants. On the top left, it's opened up a script for me. This is what they call the source um, quadrant. Um, down the bottom here, on the top, bottom left, we have the console. On the top right, we have the environment. And on the bottom right, we have a number of tabs, but the one that will load is your files, right? So the first thing to note about each of these quadrants is that you can make them bigger or smaller, depending on what you're doing. So you can use these little accordion things to make the console really big or get it back to its normal size. You can make your script take up the whole space or take it back just to half. Same on this side. You can get rid of the environment in, total, in, in its entirety if you're not interested in what appears there. Um, or you can make it take up the whole space. Similarly, you can get rid of this files tab or you can make it big. Right. So this is the default setup where you've got source, console, environment, files, but there are settings that you can change if you're if you prefer to see your console on the top right, for example. Right. So the first thing we're going to do is start with a project. So as both Danny and I said in our blog, projects really help you keep analyses that are um, related to different research projects or different um, things that you have going on separate, but they also make it much easier to find, for R to find your stuff. So I'm going to show you how to create a project um, and then show you how where it's located on your computer so that you can find it easily. So up in the top right corner here, there is this little blue square that says project and at the moment I'm not working in a project at all. So if you pull that down and say new project, it's going to ask where you want to put it. If you say put it in a new directory and you say you want to make a new project and I'm going to call this um, uh, new with me. And for simplicity's sake, so most of the time when I make a project, by default, I put it in my projects folder in my R folder in my Dropbox so that I can get to it on my laptop or my work computer. But for simplicity's sake today, let's just throw it on our desktop so that we know where it is. All right, so it's going to create this new directory called Are You With Me on my desktop. I can say create project. then you can see what we've got is down here in files, you can see that there is this path, home, desktop, are you with me? That is a file path that at the moment, this folder only has this R proj file in it. Now, if I um, just minimize our studio and go to my desktop, minimize my browser, you can see this are you with me folder is now on my desktop and it only contains this are you with me proj file, right? So what we want to do now is to go back to our R session and let's 
make some folders within that Are You With Me folder where our data um, might live and our scripts might live. So just like um, if you were working in the Finder on, on my Mac, um, if you create a new folder here, we can create a new folder called data. It'll appear there. Let's create another one called scripts. Okay, so now we have this Are You With Me folder that lives on our desktop. It has a project file and a couple of um, folders to keep our data and scripts in. And if you open your R Studio by opening this uh, proj file every time, then you'll come to this space where you're automatically working in this as your working directory. So you can see up here at when we've got um, this file path, this is the working directory that R thinks we're in right now. All right, so whenever you want to start an R analysis, um, as I said before, it's a good idea to open R Studio by opening the R proj file. So we can go to this folder on our desktop that now has this Are You With Me R proj file in it. We double click on that, then we're brought back into the R Studio within the working directory that we just created. So what I'm going to do now is create a script file. So at the moment, the console is taking up the entire left hand side of the screen because that script that we didn't save disappeared. So I'm going to create a new script so that we're back to four quadrants. So we go file, new file, and let's make an R script. And it's good practice to save your script um, in a place where you can find it. So We'll say that we're going to put it in our script folder and we're going to call it basics. All right, so now let's work through each of these quadrants. Um, your top left will create will contain your script or markdown or whatever code that you are writing. Now, um, there are a couple of useful buttons on the top here. This run button um, is, it pops up with a little preview to tell you what it does. And it tells us that this run button will run the current line or selection of code that you want to run. So you can run single lines or you can select a chunk of code and press this button and it will run just the that chunk. If you want to run, um, use a keyboard shortcut, you can use command enter to do the equivalent of the run button. Um, the other button you want to know about up the top here is source. So the source button um, it says source the contents of the active document, which isn't actually a very useful description of what it does. What it really does is run the whole script from top to bottom. So if you've finished a script and you've got your analysis that you want to um, run on a new set of data from top to bottom, then you use the source button. This little pile of pancakes button um, is super useful once you have something in your script because you can put sections into your script and it will give you an outline so that you can navigate easily um, to some, if your script end up, ends up being very long, you can find sections of it by using this pancake button. So we're going to start writing code in this script um, pretty soon. But let's move on to the console down the bottom. The console is where the output of your script will end up. Um, so you can think of the console as telling you what is being run and giving, showing you what the output is. You can also use the console to do um, pretty simple maths. So let's say we wanted to tell it what 3 plus 4 is. 
the talus that is seven. Um, you can also create variables in the console. So we could say that x equals seven, and it's going to create this value in your environment that is x, right? We said y equals three, and it's going to create another value in your environment that is equal to y. And then if you wanted to find out what x plus y is, it will give you, it'll compute using these values that you've established as variables in your environment to compute that x plus y is 10. Now, the console is, is useful um, to do this kind of simple arithmetic that you only want to do once or to do other things that you only want to do once. So often if you want to install a package, um, you can do it by just typing into the console. If you're wanting to run a piece of code that you want to rerun later, or you might want to rerun over and over again, then you should put it in your script and save it. All right, um, this little broom in the console is super useful. In fact, there's a broom here and one up in the environment as well. A broom is a cleaning tool and you can just sweep out your environment, or sweep out the console and start again. Similarly up here, you can sweep out the environment and that will remove all objects. Um, from the environment. That's quite often useful when you might have created variables that aren't quite right and you've made a correction to your code and then you can create them again so that they appear in the environment. All right, so the console is where once we start writing stuff in our script, the output will appear. You can do one-off things like install packages or do simple math in the console as well. Um, all right, top right is the environment. We're going um, this is where your data will appear when you read it in. Um, you can create new data frames and they'll appear in the environment. You can create variables or paths to data and essentially objects that you're working with appear in the environment. Um, once you have some uh, list of commands that you're using in your script, then sometimes the history is useful. So you can see here, you can look back and see what, what you've done. We've just been adding simple things together. Connections, I wouldn't worry about right now. All right, so mostly in this top right corner, you're going to be thinking about things that are in your environment, variables that you're creating, data that you're working with, um, functions that you um, might be applying to your data. All right, and in the bottom right, at the moment, we're looking at our folder and that contains our rproj file. And you can see here, it's telling you what the file path to get to that folder is. Over here, similarly, it's telling us that we have the folder on our desktop and we have, it's called are you with me? And this is what R is working with as its working directory. Um, there's a number of tabs in this bottom right corner that are useful as well. So when, once we start, <coughs> drawing plots, they will appear in the plots um, tab. This packages tab contains a list of all the packages that you have installed. If you haven't got any installed, that list will be quite small, but as you install more and more packages, they will appear um, in this packages list. Um, you can look for help by clicking on any of these packages. Let's say that we wanted help on the bee swarm package um, it would appear in the help tab. This, these help um, documentation that is embedded in R is less useful than Googling um, somebody who's written a blog about it or asking on Twitter. So the help is actually often not so helpful. Um, and the last, the viewer tab, if you're working in um, Markdown or you're generating HTML documents, then they will appear in Viewer. But we'll get to that in module later on.